Questions 11 through 20 on the 2018 Grade 8 AMC 8. Abby, Bridget, and four of their classmates will be seated in the two rows of three for a group picture as shown. If the seating positions are assigned randomly, what is the probability that Abby and Bridget are adjacent to each other in the same row or in the same column? Well, as always, probability questions, we've got numerator and denominator. Denominator is the total number of ways. So that's going to be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We've got six choices for this, then 5 for that, 3 for that, 2 for that, and, and, and so on. So it's actually 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now the numerator is our specific condition, which is that Abby and Bridget have to be either beside each other in the same row or uh, one in front of each other in the same column, I guess. Okay, well, how many ways of doing that? They can sit like this. So A can be like this, A, B, or you can have B, A. Very similarly, if they're going to be in these two, it could be A, B, or it could be B, A. All right. So that is going to be very similar here, A, B, B, A, or A, B, B, A. So that gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we'll put that 8 there. Now we have to talk about the ones where they're in different uh, rows, but same column. So it could be like A, B, or B, A. Or they could be in this column, A, B, or B, A. Or they could be in this column, A, B, or B, A. So that's another six scenarios. So 6 plus 8, 14. Now, when you have a scenario where they have been placed, let's say they were placed like that, A, B, we also have to take into consideration the other people, friend, the other four friends. And those are placed 4, 3, 2, 1. So it's f this 14. And then multiply by 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Like that. And therefore, this reduces to 14 over 6 times 5, which is 30. And that's 7 over 15. And therefore, number 11, the answer is C. The clock in Sri's car, which is not accurate, gains time at a constant rate. One day, he, as he begins shopping, he notes that his car clock and his watch both say 12. When he is done shopping, his watch says 12.30 and his car clock says 12.35. Later that day, Sri loses his watch. He looks at his car clock and says it's 7 p.m. And what is the actual time? So we have a watch. And then we have a car clock. Now, the watch says 12.30 when he looks at it. And then the car clock says 12.35. So what that means is that every 30 minutes, this car clock is uh, gaining five extra minutes. So that's why it's inaccurate. So that means over the course of one hour, it will have gained 10 minutes. So when it's 1 p.m. on the watch, it will be 1.10 on the car clock. And similarly, at 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and so on, it will have gained 10 minutes every hour. So it would be 2.20 here, and then 3.30 here, and then 4.40 here, and then 5.50 here, and then 7 p.m. here. So when the car clock shows 7 p.m., it's actually 6 p.m. on the watch, which is the accurate time. The actual time. So, number 12, the answer is B. Layla took five math tests, each worth a maximum of 100 points. Layla's score on each test was an integer between 0 and 100 inclusive. Layla received the same score on the first four tests, and she received a higher score on the last test. Her average score on the five tests was 82. How many values are possible for Layla's score on the last test? 
All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, right? X, 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 and Y. So we make a little table here, X, Y. And let's see what we get. So the, the average is actually 4X plus Y divided by 5, and they're saying that's 82. So that means 4X plus Y has got to be 82 times 5, which is 410. So basically, we have to get integer solutions for that equation. All right, when y is 100, that's the highest it can be. We get 77.5. That's not an integer. When it's 99, we get 77.75. Again, not an integer. When it's 98, we get 78. Okay, great. That's an integer. So here's one solution. 97, we get 78.25. 96, we get 78.5. 95, we get 78.75, and 94, we get 79. So it looks like we get integer values every time we go down by 4. So let's just go down by 4 instead of wasting time. This will be 80, and then 86, it will be 81, and then 82, it will be 82. Okay, so the last score is higher than the others, right? She received a higher score on the last test. So that means y has to be greater than x. So this solution is invalid. So the only valid ones is this one, this one, this one, and this one. So four, four of them. So four possible values for Layla's score on the last test, namely 98, 94, 90, and 86. So number 13, the answer is A. Let n be the greatest five-digit number whose digits have a product of 120. What is the sum of the digits of n? Well, the first thing to do is take 120 and break it up into its prime factors. It is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Then we have to create a five-digit number so that when you take those digits and multiply them together, it equals 120. Well, one obvious one is just to put those numbers, 5, 3, 2, 2, 2, in a way so that it's gr the greatest. We want to make the number as big as possible. Okay, I don't think this is the right answer, but let's just see what happens. We want to figure out the sum of the digits. Okay, the sum of the digits would be 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, and that is 14. Well, that's not even one of the answer choices, so definitely that's wrong. But I just wanted to illustrate how this question would work. So now we got to go back and think, okay, how can I make a big number, well, as big as possible, so that when the digits are multiplied together, it adds up, uh, it has a product of 120. Well, what's the largest digit I can put there? The 9, but I can't make a 9 from this in any way. But I can make an 8. 2 times 2 times 2. That's an 8. And then after that, I don't have much left. I only have a 3 and a 5. And if I multiply them together, I get a 15. Obviously, 15 is not a digit. So I'll just put the 5 here and the 3 here. And you say, well, what about these guys? I don't have any numbers left. Well, I just put a 1. So first, test it out. 8 times 5 times 3 times 1 times 1 is indeed 120. Of course, it would be. And now we just have to figure out the sum of the digits. So it would be 8 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1. And that is 18. And therefore, number 14, the answer is D. In the diagram below, a diameter of each of the two small circles is a radius of the larger circle. If the two smaller circles have a combined area of one square unit, then what is the area of the shaded region in square units? Well, let's draw a line straight across like that. That should be good enough. And this is going to be the radius of the small circle. So according to the question, the two smaller circles have a combined area of 1. So pi r squared plus pi r squared is equal to 1. So 2 pi r squared is equal to 1. Pi r squared is equal to a half. And therefore, r is equal to... 1 over 2 pi, and finally, r squared, that is, and then finally, r is equal to 1 over root 2 pi. All right. 
Now we have to figure out area of the shaded region. Area of the shaded region is, of course, the area of the big circle, which is pi. And that radius is 2r, right? Because this is the radius of the big circle, and that's going to be 2r squared minus the two small circles, so 2 pi r squared. So this looks like 4 pi r squared minus 2 pi r squared. But instead of putting pi r squared, uh, or we can just keep it. There's, several, there's a couple ways. It doesn't really matter. So this becomes 2 pi r squared. And 2 pi r squared is just 1, according to the question. So there you go. That's it. Number 15, the answer is D. Professor Chang has nine different language books lined up on a bookshelf, two Arabic, three German, and four Spanish. How many ways are there to arrange the nine books on the shelf, keeping the Arabic books together and keeping the Spanish books together? We will treat the two Arabic books as one unit since they have to be together. We will treat the four Spanish books as one unit since they have to be together, and the German books can be separated. So it really boils down to a scenario of placing five uh, units in five slots. The, that's sort of the, I guess, the summary. Well, five ways of placing, uh, uh, I guess, a, an item in that slot, and four ways there, three ways there, two ways there, and one way there. You multiply them all, and you get 120. But 120 is not one of the answer choices. The answer choices are far greater. Why is that? Well, 120 is fine. That's perfectly fine. But then we also have to take into account that these Arabic books, if let's say the first book was A1 and A2, they have two different ways of being arranged like that. So you have to multiply by 2. And then these four Spanish books, S1, S2, S3, S4, have 24, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 permutations, which is 24. So we've got to multiply by 24. So this is the product. 120 times 2 times 24, and that is 5, 7, 6, 0. So number 16, the answer is C. Bella begins to walk from her house toward her friend's Ella's house. At the same time, Ella begins to ride her bicycle toward Bella's house. They each maintain a constant speed, and Ella rides five times as fast as Bella walks. The distance between their houses is two miles, which is ten five six zero feet, and Bella covers two and a half feet with each step. How many steps will Bella take by the time she meets Ella? All right. So we'll draw a little graph here, and off we go. So we have Bella and Ella, and let's just say they meet here. So this distance I'll call A, and this distance I'll call uh, 10, 5, 6, 0, minus A. And the time that they meet will be equal. So time for Bella is the time is for Ella. And speed is equal to distance over time, as always. Therefore, time is equal to distance over speed. So this is distance of Bella over the speed of Bella, and this is the distance of Ella over the speed of Ella. So the distance for Ella is A, and then her speed, uh, it, we don't know the speed, but we know that she, in comparison to Ella, Ella rides five times faster as Bella walks. So if her speed is X, then Ella's speed will be 5X. And then DE is 10, 560 minus A. Okay, well, the good news is the X is cancel. I can cross multiply and just get 5A is equal to 10, 5, 6, 0 minus A. So therefore, 6A is equal to 1, 0, 5, 6, 0. And dividing through, we get A is equal to 1, 7, 6, 0. So that is how many feet. But we want to figure out how many steps? Well, each step is two and a half feet. So we take the 760 and divide by 2.5, and when you do, you get 704, and that represents the number of steps. So number 17, the answer is A. 
How many positive factors does 23,232 have? Two, three, two, three, two. Well, when you break this up into its prime factors, it's 2 to the power of 6 times 3 to the power of 1 times 11 to the power of 2. And a cool rule to figure out the number of factors is you take the first exponent, add 1. Then you take the second exponent, add 1. Remember, you're multiplying. Take the uh, last exponent add 1. So this would be the number of factors. So it would be 7 times 2 times 3, and that is 42. And that is the answer. So number 18, it is E. In a sign pyramid, a cell gets a positive if the two cells below it have the same sign, and it gets a negative if the two cells below it have different signs. The diagram below illustrates a sign pyramid with four levels. How many positive ways are there to fill the four cells in the bottom row to produce a positive at the top of the pyramid? All right. Well, first of all, how many ways are there to uh, create those, right? Each of them can have a positive or a negative. So two choices, two choices, two choices, two choices. Multiply them, and that gives me a total of 16 possible combinations. How many of those will produce a positive? Well, a positive will produce at the top if the ones below it are the same. So either plus plus or negative negative. So you have to have either this or this. And you will get a negative at the top if you have either plus negative or if you have negative plus. So if you just concentrate on the second row, the second row has one, two, three, four uh, possible arrangements, and of those four, two will produce a positive, so half, basically. So if you extrapolate that, it means that half of those will eventually result in a positive at the top, so in half of 16 is 8. And if you have time, you can write out all 16 and, you know, go for it, but this is a shortcut in my opinion. So number 19, the answer is C. In ABC triangle, point E is on AB with AE equal to 1 and EB equal to 2. Point D is on AC so that DE is parallel to BC and point F is on BC so that EF is parallel to AC. What is the ratio of the area of CDEF to the area of ABC? Well, I will show a hopefully a very helpful shortcut. Draw a line from F to the other side so that the line is parallel to AB. And then draw a similar line from D to the other side so that D to the other side makes a parallel line. And then you can connect this all the way to the other end so that that line is parallel to CB. And then finally connect this to there so that that line is parallel to C8, like that. And then now you'll notice that all of these are equal triangles. And therefore, the ratio of CDEF to ABC can be calculated very quickly. CDEF would be 1, 2, 3, 4 of those triangles. And ABC is the whole thing, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And there you go, 4 over 9. So number 20, the answer is 8.